Hello everyone, welcome to this video on techniques for seasonality. In the previous videos, we looked at some of the simpler techniques uh, such as moving average, simple exponential smoothing, trend analysis using linear trend. So those techniques cannot deal with seasonal patterns in a demand. So in order to deal with seasonality, we need to have techniques or the forecasting models which can incorporate seasonal patterns. So just a quick recap. So what are the seasonal variations? So these are the regular reoccurring uh, wave-like patterns that can be linked uh, to, to events, to weather, or some other repeating pattern. There are lots of examples of seasonal variations, such as for a florist, peak in demand every year on Mother's Day, on Valentine's Day. So that's a seasonal pattern. For retail sector, peak in demand either towards the beginning of the month or towards the end of the month. For an employer who is paying uh, his employees uh, semi-monthly, so they will have two seasons for the payroll department, uh, where you are generating payroll uh, in order to pay your employees. For a cafeteria in a busiest downtown, where you have lots of office locations, will have two or perhaps three seasons per day. So, for instance, when people come to the offices in the morning, during afternoon and when people leave offices. So there could be three seasons for a cafeteria. There are lots of examples. So the point I'm trying to make here is when I say seasons, they aren't related to the weather seasons only. Okay, so before we look into different methods to, uh, to model seasonality, let's look into various time series, how we're going to express seasonality. So if you have a time series where seasonality is simply or a wave-like pattern is simply moving around the average value. In this case, we can say this time series is stationary, which only exhibits a seasonal pattern. However, for the real life, most of the time series, which will exhibit some seasonality and a trend. So which means, so instead of deviating around the average value, you will deviate around a trend line. So for our examples and the numericals we're going to solve in this particular course, we will focus on trend plus seasonality. So we'll deal with uh, uh, both of these. The real example of this type of pattern or this type of behavior was when we looked into this international air travel data, right? So this was a seasonal pattern as well as there's a trend going upwards, right? So we'll deal with these type of problems or the time series which exhibits both trend and seasonality. The two different approaches to deal with seasonality are two different types of models. Additive models. So in additive model, we express uh, seasonality as a quantity. However, in the multiplicative models, we express seasonality as proportion, right? So the term we're going to use here to express seasonality as proportions is called seasonal index or sometimes it's also called seasonal relative right the next question is what is seasonal index for the seasonal relative so the seasonal relatives uh, uh, defines the proportion of average or trend uh, for a season in the multiplicative model so before we move forward let's talk a little bit more about the seasonal indices so let's say if the seasonal index value is given as one so for this means, if you have seasonal index as one, there's no seasonality. Seasonal index value less than one. Let's say we have seasonal index value as 0 0.75. So when you're interpreting this information for less than one, such as 0 0.75, for 0 0.75, I can say that for this particular season, the demand is going to be 0 0.75% of the average value which means my demand will be lower than average. On the other hand, if I have a seasonal index which is greater than one, such as let's say 1.25, the demand will be higher than the average value, or simply my demand will be 125%, right? Uh, so anything greater than one, demand will be higher by that percentage. Anything lower, my demand will be below average. In this case, my demand will be 0.75% off average. So you should know how to interpret these values, right? 
So in order to work through these examples or solve the seasonality problems, there are two approaches. Uh, centered, uh, one is the center moving average method, and the second one is annual averages method. So in this course, we'll look at annual averages method. So in annual averages method, we'll use annual averages in order to calculate the uh, seasonal indices or the seasonal relative, right? And we'll use seasonal relative to re-seasonalize uh, the forecast that we obtained using trend analysis. So I will not read through this slide. However, let's follow these steps and apply this using a data set so that you're clear how to forecast uh, seasonal demand using annual averages method. So for this, we'll use Excel. So I'm working with the chapter three data set Excel file. And here's the seasonality worksheet Q9. So we'll work with this worksheet. For this time series, we have data given from 2013 to 2017. Data is divided into quarters, quarter one to quarter four. For each of the quarters, we have a production of, I believe uh, it is some kind of oil in terms of uh, thousands of liters, right? Uh, so four quarters of production for 2013, four quarters of production, uh, for 2014. So if I ask you a question, how many seasons are there? There are four seasons. So why four seasons? Uh, the data is given on yearly basis, and for each year, data is divided into four quarters, right? So if I give you a data uh, on monthly basis, in that case, you're going to treat it as 12 seasons. So before we go ahead and dig into this, it just just a quick note that I have organized this data here. Uh, in a tabular format which suits uh, for the easier calculations. I would recommend to stick to this format. However, if you have a better format, please feel free to use, use it. Uh, you can do all your calculations by adding new columns here, what will make it very confusing. So I have divided or reorganized this data set uh, based on the steps we're going to follow. So we're going to start by computing uh, each year's uh, annual demand and average seasonal demand. So what we have here is we have data for 2013 for all quarters, data for 2014, all quarters, 15 and 16 and so on. So the, let's start with getting the total annual demand. So it's going to be sum of demand for all quarters for 2013. So that will give me the annual demand for 2013. So similarly, I'm going to get the sum for demand for all quarters for 2014. So and so on. So we'll get the annual demand for each year by adding up the quarterly demand in this case. And similarly, we can get the average seasonal demand. So in this case, I'm going to use average of all quarters. So average for 2013. Similarly, average function, and we are going to do same for 2014. And similarly. Or 2015 and 2016 right so step two let's compute the actual demand ratio relative to every seasonal demand so here's the uh, actual demand for 2013 quarter one and here's the average in b30 right so we'll take ratio of these two so in 2013 ratio for quarter one is going to be actual for quarter one so which is b25 so that's actual divided by dollar b dollar 30 right because we're going to use the absolute reference so that will be 0 0.82 so let's apply this across so again going back to the interpretation of these seasonal ratios by looking at this you can see in quarter one the demand was below average for quarter two and three the demand was above average Right. So let's calculate for 2014. For quarter one, it's going to be D25 divided by dollar D dollar 30. And similarly, let's apply this across. So similarly, we're going to calculate for 2015 and 2016. Okay. So up to this point, we have the ratios being calculated for each year. So once we have ratios for each year in place, then we will calculate the average ratio across each season right to get the seasonal relatives so here we're going to get the average ratio so the average ratio will be uh, average of 
ratio for quarter one in 2013, comma, for 2014, for 2015, and 2016. So I'm taking the average uh, for all the seasonal ratios we have calculated, right? Okay. So let's apply that across. So here I end up having my seasonal relatives. So this is your checkpoint. As I said earlier, in this case, we have four seasons. Your average ratio or the seasonal relatives must add up equal to number of seasons. If I have seven seasons, my average ratios must add up to seven. If I have 12 seasons, these must add up to 12. If your average ratios or the seasonal relatives doesn't add up to the number of seasons, that means you have made some mistake at some point, right? So always check this before you proceed any further. So the next step is fit a linear trend to total annual demand. So here we don't need to deseasonalize data at this point because when you take the annual demand here, so you're already removing the seasonality from your data set, right? So you're canceling those peaks and valleys. So the next step is fit a linear trend to the total annual demand. So as we're going to use a trend in this case. Uh, so where is the annual demand? So we already calculated annual demand here uh, in row number 29, right? So the annual production for 2013 is 161, for 2014, 188, 163, and 2016 is 166. So let's add a line chart. So we're going to follow the procedure what we did in the trend analysis. So here's my line chart. And in this line chart, we're going to add a trend line. So we're going to go to design, add element, trend line, linear trend. And I'm going to make this trend line with visible. So let's change the color to red and make it a bit, a bit thicker. And again, we're going to go to this plus sign trend line, more options, and display equation on chart. So the equation of line in this case is minus x plus 172. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So from this equation, we can calculate uh, the demand or the annual demand for 2017. So this is my period 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's going to be equals to minus 5 plus 172. So this gives me 167 units as my forecast for 2017. And from here, we can calculate the demand for each quarter, right? So up to this point, after fitting the line, we have extended the model by calculating for 2017, right? So that's the year ahead. Uh, so divide forecast for next year's annual demand by four to get the average seasonal demand. So as we know that there are four quarters, right? So I'm going to type here 2017, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. So if I divide 167 by four, I'm going to get the average demand for each quarter, right? So which is around 41.75 liters. However, at this point, the forecast is not done. This is average, just a straight line, right? And we want to adjust with respect to each season. And how we adjust for each season? We multiply uh, the seasonal index by the average demand that we have obtained from the trend analysis, right? So let's go ahead. So quarter one, it is going to be C39. And we have the seasonal index or the average ratio for the first season 0 0.83, which is L25. So let's format it a little bit. So I'm going to make change it to number to two decimal places. So we have 34.48 thousand uh, liters uh, as a projection for quarter one in 2017, right? So similarly, if we repeat this step, uh, so as we have seasonal index as 1.29, so the formula for quarter two is going to be C40 multiplied by L26. So now you can see from here that for the seasons, when we have a seasonal, sorry, the average ratio or the seasonal index below one, we have damped the demand by certain percentage. 
for the seasons where the seasonal index is greater than one, then we have amplified the demand for the particular uh, season. Part of the reason is because in the historical data or in the time series, we have observed that demand peaks in certain uh, quarters and then the demand drops in the other quarters than the average value. So we're trying to adjust uh, the future uh, projections according to the C's average ratios or the seasonal indices we have calculated earlier. So one of the most common mistake I have seen uh, when it comes to calculating the average, sometimes uh, students they calculate here like 167 and at this point they will not divide it by 4. So why we're dividing, dividing it by 4? Because we want to get the average demand for each quarter and then we want to do the adjustment. So I have seen that they will multiply 167 by the average ratios. No, that's wrong. Okay, so divide it by the number of seasons to get the average value. Then multiply the average by seasonal indices. So this concludes the demand forecasting part in terms of applying different quantitative models. Uh, so if you have any questions around these models, please feel free to reach me out. Thank you very much.